PT Wijaya Karya or Wika is a state-owned enterprise that operates in providing construction service. Wika has two core business, construction and mechanical electrical. Wika was listed on Indonesia Stock Exchange in 2007. The company was founded in 1961 and based in Jakarta. In 2018, PT Wijaya Karya is currently in position 3 out of 17 companies in building construction. Wika primary customer is the government of Indonesia as well as other Indonesian style owned enterprise and expands in target markets to the private sector. Hello Mrs. Elvia and everyone. Now, my team and I from Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Indonesia, we're going to present you about our valuation and analysis of Vijaya Karya. First of all, let me introduce you about my teammates. My name is Tanya Tri Rahma. As the first speaker, I'm going to explain you about the forecasting and its assumptions of Wijaya Karya at the end of December 2018. And next, I will be followed by my teammates. Hello, I am Dina Nurhalidin. As a second speaker, I'm going to talk about uh, our analysis equity valuation, likely capital asset pricing model, Dividend discount model and discounted cash flow. And next, hi, my name is Rachel Rosalina as the third speaker, and I'm going to talk about the other aspects such as financial distress, merger and acquisition, job valuation, and other qualitative aspects. So let's begin the presentation. Our team, as an analyst, conduct the forecasting to communicate the prospects of the company, which is Wijaya Karya, to the investors and the stakeholders. The table beside is the condensed forecasted cash flow condensed forecasted income statement, and the condensed forecasted balance sheet. Our team as an analyst conduct the forecasting to communicate the prospects of the company which is Wijaya Karya to the investors and the other stakeholders. The table beside is the condensed cash flow and condensed forecasted income statement, the condensed forecasted balance sheet. To forecast the financial statements, we use some assumption component like macroeconomic and industry condition, sales growth rate, no pat margin, networking capital to sales, non-current asset to sales, investment asset to sales, after tax of net debt, after tax return on investment asset, and debt to equity. However, we believe that all of the planning from the previous year, as well as moving Indonesia's capital city, will continue to improve the usage of the construction industry. About the sales growth rate, we expect that Indonesia's economy will continue to be stable with inflation rate around 3%, Bank Indonesia 7-day repo rate at 6%, and a stable exchange rate. In 2019, we forecast a little bit of slowing down in weak sales growth rate because of political situation such as presidential election, and therefore their sales will mostly come from the project continuity. In 2020, sales growth rate will increase even more in 2021 due to the information that the movement of the capital from Jakarta to East Kalimantan will begin at the end of 2020. For 2020 until 2023, we using stable economy assumption, we forecast that the sales growth rate may depend on the continuity of the project and the new projects. In 2020, we forecast higher sales growth rate because we believe that after the new government era will have been a settle for a year, they will continue making an infrastructure effort even though it may not be as massive as the previous era. About the no profit margin, we calculate sales, net interest profit after tax, and net, net interest expense after tax, which generated from our forecasted sales growth rate. It can influence the net operating profit after tax margin that is always increased from 8% in 2018 to 6% in 2023. We also assume net working capital to sales to see how the company manage their sales and short term farm that they own. We call net working capital to sales is constantly around 0.45 until 0.53. Next. We use non-current asset to sales to know the company usage of fixed asset until a certain point of sales. 
We believe that Wika's non-current asset to sales ratio will not stray too much. Our team conduct the analysis of equity valuation, use capital asset pricing model, dividend discount model, and discounted cash flow. The capital asset pricing model is the sum of the risk-free rate with beta and risk premium. The risk-free rate is calculated based on the Jakarta Interbank Operate Rate or GIBOR average in a year of 5.44%. Gibor was chosen to calculate the risk free rate because the interest rate is updated and therefore can reflect the actual market situation. Beta is calculated using the regression method to see the sensitivity of cash flow and earnings to changes in the market economy. Pika has a beta of 0.061 where the beta is below 1 which show Pika has earnings and cash flow that are less sensitive to economic changes. The last component is the risk premium derived from the reduction of risk free rate and risk market we show a minus 40.02% Market risk of minus 8.55% taken from the average return of the Jakarta Composite Index sector construction and property because the risk market is influenced by the psychological market and overall stock performance and this is reflected in the Jakarta Composite Index. The negative market risk is due to the worst 2018 Jakarta Composite Index in the last three years due to the negative sentiment both from within the country and foreign sentiment in 2018. According to calculation, capital asset pricing model WICA obtained 4.57%, which show the rates of return obtained by investor if investing the money into WICA is 4.57%. Dividend discount model is a method used to determine the fair price of a stock or intrinsic value. To calculate intrinsic value, we add up terminal value with present value for the next three years to 2021, which continues to grow each year. Then, the value of intrinsic value will be compared with the Wika market value at the same time to determine whether the intrinsic value of Wika is undervalued or overvalued, so that is, is worth buying. In 2018, Wika intrinsic value is 1742.91 and market value is 1655. It can be seen that Wika intrinsic value is below market value, which means that Wika valuation is under value and recommended for purchase. Discounted cash flow is an analysis of future cash flow performance with past performance projection to determine the right of return on investment and whether the company has cash flow that is growing stable. Analysis using discounted cash flow is done by comparing the prediction of the company fair value in the future with the current market share. According to our calculation, Wika intrinsic value prediction for the next few years is 4,619 and the current market share is 1,655. It can be seen that Wika intrinsic value is below market value, which means in the future, Wika valuation is under value and recommended for purchase. Next, we are going to talk about Jaya Karya Financial Distress. So, under the measurement of Outman C score, we found out that in both year, in 2017 and 2018, Jaya Karya is suffering financial distress. In 2017, Jaya Karya only scored 1.4, which is less than 1.8, and then in 2018, they also only scored 1.3, which is less than the previous year. The major contributor for this financial distress is because their written earning and also EBIT is very small in comparison to their total asset. Next, we are going to talk about the job completion of Vijaya Karya. Unfortunately, in 2017, Vijaya Karya did not issue any bonds. However, in 2018, they do issue Komodo bonds, in which the first value is equal to 5.4 trillion rupees with the coupon rate of 7.7%. And this is how we count their debt value. And this is the result of the debt value. Next is merger and acquisition. In 2017, Wika is under financial distress, and the situation keeps getting worse in 2018. This means that Wika is having difficulties in dealing it with its liabilities. To keep an eye towards simulating growth, increasing market share, and also maintaining competitive advantage, Wika can be 
required by maintaining its legal name and also structure. In 2013, Vika Markup's price was below 2000. However, in 2015, this market price increased 100%. This means that we hope that in the next few years, Vika can also raise to its glory again. Okay, next we are going to talk about the qualitative aspect of Vijaya Karya. First is the company's core business. The company core business is infrastructure and construction business entity. C is customer and geographical exposure. Vijaya Karya customer mostly comes from Indonesia, but they also have customers from overseas such as Al Jazeera, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, East Timor, Nigeria, and also Taiwan. And then B is the quality of management. In 2018, Vijaya Karya focused on sustainable report, which means they are focusing on making their corporate governance as sustainable as possible, and they also implement best practice management. Next, we have Vita Competitive Advantage, which is first value creation, B backward forward integration, C leadership, D the pioneer of concrete industry, and then we have high technology, and then we also have EPCC, um, overseas expansion, design and build method, and transit oriented development. Next is Vika Corporate Governance. Vika always uphold the implementations of good corporate governance principle. The company strives to continue to maintain integrity and improve itself in the implementation of GCG commitment in order to achieve the goal of being adaptive, sustainable, and developing competitiveness business entity. Vika requires the company organs, employees, subsidiaries, and affiliates, and other stakeholders to understand and comply with all of the Code of Ethics guidelines. Code of Conduct, GCG Guidelines, Company Articles of Association, and Prevailing Laws and Regulations specifically those governing the duties and obligations of each party. Next is Wicca Industry Growth Trend. As a developing country, Indonesia has a very rapid scale in the construction sector over the past 20 years. In 2008, the government spent approximately 35 trillion only on road network works and water resources. This development effort continues to these days and is the main highlight of Joko Widodo's government work program with the name Navajita. According to the 2018 World Bank Group report, Indonesia's infrastructure's competitiveness in 2018 is ranked 52nd in Asia. The International Monetary Fund said that Indonesia is ranked third with the best infrastructure in Southeast Asia. Although in the new government, the government program is more inclined towards the development of human resources. However, in the next two till four years, the government is still continuing the construction of unfinished infrastructure, so the construction activity still has growth. Also, Indonesia government is right now focusing on relocating the Indonesia's capital city, Jakarta, to Kalimantan, which means Vika will have more pressure. Next is the competitive analysis of Vika. We are using the border five forces for this one. First is the bargaining power of buyers, which is strong, and the bargaining power of supplier, which is weak, the threat of new entrants, which is weak, the threat of substitute product, which is weak, and then the last but not least is rivalry among existing firms, which is strong. Next is disruptive technology. Vika uses the engineering tool named Building Information Modeling or BIM in the context of digital construction so that it can provide benefits in the term of quality time and helps in cost efficiency because it minimizes the risk of rework. BIM has the advantage of being able to carry out several engineering planning stages seamlessly. BIM can also find class detections in several projects. Class detections serves to uncover potential problems at the start and integrate them. Then, improve the design before the construction process begins. Next is Vika market share. Throughout 2019, Vika shares price continues to decline. So, to increase market capitalization, Vika plans to release treasury shares totaling around 6 million shares. Vika participates in working on Jakarta relocation projects such as basic infrastructure projects such as roads, electricity, networks, and oil and gas infrastructure also has the potential to increase market capitalization of Vika. Last but not least is regulation. Vika applies the Occupational Safety and Health System based on OHSAH 18001, an Environmental Management System based on ISO 14001, and with the statutory regulations and other applicable requirements. The system used to maintain zero accident in all its work practice and environmental preservation. Workers' welfare and rights are stipulated in the Perjanjian Kerja Bersama or PKP, which is regularly evaluated by management and trade unions. 
The information contained in this video has been taken from the public data which we deem reliable, such as annual report of Vijaya Karya and the Thomas Reuters. The information provided are designed to provide helpful information on the subject discussed, but this report is not meant to be used for any decision making. The financial distress and the merger and acquisition recommendation are intended for internal use. Our team are not responsible for any damage or negative consequences for any person watching in this video. Thank you for watching this video.